Alcatraz, The Rock, also known as America's Devil's Island, a maximum security federal prison that housed up to 300 of the most difficult and dangerous prisoners of its time. One of the most famous prisoners to be housed here was mob boss Al Capone. In fact, he was also one of the first prisoners to arrive at this facility. During its 29 years of operation, 36 prisoners made 14 escape attempts. And it's reported that none of those escape attempts were successful. Yet five prisoners still remain unaccounted for. So who's to say if those attempts weren't truly successful or not? During the 29 years of operation, there were eight murders at Alcatraz. Five prisoners even committed suicide and 15 prisoners died of natural causes. And in 1963, Alcatraz closed. It's reported that the reason for this closing is because of its high cost of operation. In fact, during its time, the cost of operation for this facility was the highest of any other prison. In this video, I wanna talk about what it would be like to be locked up at Alcatraz and compare that with everything that I know about being locked up personally myself. This is After Prison Show. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about what it would be like to be locked up in Alcatraz. And I'm gonna talk about everything that I have learned doing the research about this facility. Also use an item that I just recently purchased from eBay to help paint this Alcatraz picture a little better. And I'm gonna compare this with everything that I know personally about being locked up myself. I just recently found this magazine right here on eBay. It's called Dining In. And this is an Alcatraz food magazine. And this right here is an actual prison menu from Alcatraz breakfast chow lunch chow and dinner so with help from this magazine and also from what I've learned doing research about Alcatraz I'm gonna talk to you about what it would be like to be locked up at this facility and I'm quite sure you're gonna be surprised about some of these things that you learn about Alcatraz the first thing that I learned about Alcatraz with help from my research and also this Alcatraz food magazine, of course deals with the way prisoners were fed while at this prison. And with everything that I've talked about thus far on After Prison Show, dealing with the type of food that they feed you while incarcerated, all I've ever been able to tell you is just how horrible that food really is. Everywhere that I was ever imprisoned had like the worst food ever. So when you think about the type of food that you would get at Alcatraz, you could only imagine that that food wouldn't be very good at all either. But the surprising reality is, and this was even a shock to me as well, is that Alcatraz was a prison that was considered to have the best food of any other prison during its time. In fact, this was one of few things that prisoners actually did enjoy about this facility and that was the way that they fed you. Not only did they feed you what was considered good prison food, but they also gave you a lot of this food. In fact, prisoners were actually allowed to go up to the serving line and get however much food they wanted. But there was a rule though, and that was that however much food you put on your tray, you have to eat it all. So considering the fact that this was actually considered the worst prison to be locked up at, at the time, that was a surprising thing to learn. And considering everywhere that I've been locked up at, not only do they feed you horrible food, but it's also horrible food that comes in the smallest portions as well. And with some help from this magazine, I actually wanna read you a daily menu of what it would be like going to the chow hall for breakfast, lunch, and dinner while at Alcatraz. It's also interesting the way they label breakfast, lunch, and dinner in here. It goes breakfast, dinner, supper. So I guess dinner would be lunch and supper would be dinner. That's kind of confusing actually. But for Monday, July 15th, 1940, this is the actual menu. For breakfast, stewed peaches. I have no idea what a stewed peach is. Wheat meal, cream of wheat, I think that's what that is. Milk and sugar, minced bacon and scrambled eggs, hot cornbread, bread, and also coffee. So not only are you getting regular bread, but you're getting hot cornbread as well. And to be honest with you, that sounds like an exceptional breakfast to have while locked up. For dinner it was, and again dinner is lunch, navy bean soup, beef stew and vegetables, steamed potatoes, creamed peas. What is a creamed pea? That's like baby food, isn't it? Sour pickles, I've never heard of that either, bread and also coffee. 
I'm not exactly sure what everything on this lunch menu is per se, but it does sound like it's quite a bit of food and variety as well. And for supper, it was steamed frankfurters. What is a frankfurter? Lyonnaise potatoes. I have no idea what a lyonnaise potato is. Succotash, again, I have no idea what that is. Lettuce salad, rice custard pudding, bread, and also coffee. Again, I have no idea what most of this stuff is. Succotash or lyonnaise potatoes. But it does sound like quite a bit of variety with this dinner tray as well. Now there was only one other good thing that I found about being locked up at Alcatraz and that was the fact that every prisoner there had their own individual single cell. So nobody there had a cell that they had to share with anyone else. And while learning about this, I also read that prisoners really were appreciative of this because this kind of helped to keep assaults at somewhat of a minimum. With every prison that I have been at personally, I've never been anywhere that allowed prisoners to have a single cell. Now I have heard of special programs at other facilities that do allow prisoners to have single cells, but those are very hard to get into. In fact, there's something like five year waits to get into a single cell at these certain facilities that do offer those. And I'm sure a big reason why Alcatraz was able to offer single cells to the prisoners there is because of the fact that at the most, they only housed 300 prisoners. With every prison that I have been at personally, these places have something like over a thousand prisoners there. So these prisons really don't have the space to offer single cells to the prisoners. But having a single cell could be good and also bad at the same time. Sure, it's great that you don't have to share a cell with somebody. You don't have to run the risk of having a cellmate that you absolutely can't stand, hate, possibly even fight, or have to worry about even worse things with. With a single cell, you do also have personal space. But one thing that I have learned from the only times that I've dealt with a single cell, and that would be the times that I was locked up in the hole, is that while you are in a single cell by yourself, you really are alone. Sharing a cell with somebody is really only good for the fact that at least you have somebody in there you can talk to. Hopefully it's somebody that you like and not somebody that you absolutely can't stand. But really when you are in a single cell by yourself, you're going to find yourself doing a lot of thinking. And sometimes that thinking can lead to depression or even worse. So again, really the only good things I found about being locked up at Alcatraz were the fact that they feed you really well there and the fact that you get a single cell and some personal space allotted to yourself. But with the fact that Alcatraz is considered one of the worst prisons ever, you have to imagine that the bad surely outweighs any good that would take place there. This was a prison that was especially designed for the most difficult and also dangerous prisoners of its time. So you have to imagine that violence was probably at an all-time high. There were probably attacks, fights, obviously a lot of riots, including a macaroni riot. And because of all of that, they had some pretty crazy rules at this prison. One of which was called a rule of silence. This meant that prisoners were not allowed to speak at all unless in the chow hall or on the rec yard. So while prisoners were locked down in their cells, they couldn't talk to the guy who was right there next to them or anyone else for that matter. In fact, if they were caught talking, they would then face certain disciplinary action, which possibly could have resulted in them getting beaten up by prison guards or also being sent to the hole, the segregation of Alcatraz, which was actually referred to as the dungeon and was located down in the basement. I can only imagine that place must have been a living hell. And another interesting thing that's included in this magazine as well is also the menu for what prisoners in solitary confinement were fed. They weren't fed the same thing that prisoners in general population were. And just to give you an idea of what it would be like to be in solitary confinement at Alcatraz and what you would be eating, well here is the breakfast, lunch, and dinner menu for Monday, November 25th. 1946. Breakfast, half a bowl of milk, half a bowl of coffee, and one ration of cereal. That doesn't sound anything like that breakfast menu that I read you for general population. In fact, that sounds like you're going to spend a lot of time hungry. For lunch, a half a bowl of soup, one bowl of tea, and four slices of bread. For dinner, half a bowl of soup, 
or green salad, one bowl of coffee, and four slices of bread. It sounds like while in isolation at Alcatraz, you're gonna be eating a lot of bread. Now there is another bad thing that I learned about Alcatraz that I had no idea about. And this also is part of the reason why they fed prisoners so good while at this facility. And that is the fact that they offered no type of commissary or canteen here. In fact, prisoners were not allowed to order or have any type of food sent to them whatsoever. So the only time that they were eating is actually when they were in the chow hall. So if you were to get hungry in the middle of the night while in your cell, I'm not really sure you would have anything to eat. Obviously, you weren't ordering commissary or getting any sort of commissary. Maybe you would have been able to smuggle things back from the chow hall. I know personally, if I was locked up there, I most certainly would have been trying to smuggle things back just so I could have that late night snack if ever the situation arose that I was starving inside of my cell. Through this magazine, I also learned a lot of other interesting facts about Alcatraz, such as what it was like for the guards at this facility. It says the only thing guards had when they went into the cell blocks was a whistle. So I'm pretty sure that had to be quite stressful for these guards going into these cell blocks full of prisoners who were considered the most difficult and dangerous of that time. And what would they do if things did erupt into violence while they were in those cell blocks? All it seems they could do is blow their whistle and wait for other guards to come in there to back them up. And this is something else interesting that I learned from this magazine right here. And that was how much these prisoners at Alcatraz were actually paid to work their jobs, whether in the kitchen or any other sort of job. And it says that prisoners who worked in the prison factory making clothing, industrial gloves, brushes, and other products are paid from seven to 20 cents an hour depending on their output. Seven to 20 cents an hour, and this is back between like the 1930s and 1960s. Well, it really doesn't seem like too much has changed between way back then in modern day prison. In fact, I myself personally had prison jobs where I was only making like 17 cents an hour. So it's crazy to imagine that I was making the same amount of money in prison per hour as guys who were locked up in Alcatraz back in the 1930s through 1960s. I also learned that prisoners at Alcatraz spent a lot of time making prison wine and alcohol. In fact, I read about a prisoner in this magazine by the name of Rufus Franklin who was caught with contraband in his cell. In searching this man's cell, I found five pounds of raisins concealed in his bed. Evidence submitted. Action. To be placed in solitary confinement on restricted diet. Privileges to remain forfeited until other orders. Said that he did not know the raisins were in his cell. It also goes on to say, occasionally an inmate assigned to the kitchen would take dried fruit, raisins mostly, and ferment them in yeast and water to get high on the juice. You know, Alcatraz sounds like a really crazy place to be locked up at. And I just think what it would be like for old Joe to be locked up at this facility serving the seven year sentence that I just served. A prison that is a mile and a half offshore. A prison where 36 prisoners tried to escape from. I think to myself what it would have been like if a prisoner approached me saying, Hey, I'm getting ready to escape. You want to come with me? Can you swim? And to be honest with you, I'm not sure I would say no to an opportunity like that. Supposedly of these 36 prisoners who tried to escape, none made it. But yet five are still unaccounted for. It only makes me wonder if any of those five or even all of them actually got away. I'm not sure if they're still doing tours at Alcatraz, but I can guarantee you that if they are, I certainly would like to go there and experience just what that prison is like firsthand. Maybe that's something that could happen sometime here on After Prison Show. Hey, look. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about it. And as always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world, never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day. Peace! Let's give a few shout outs starting with Twitter, Cato, Gay Bacon Strip, Eric Hagelstein, Ben J. Creek III, Ryan Miles and Benjamin. Thanks to all of you for retweeting yesterday's tweet from Instagram. Let's shout out Amber Hale 12, 24 Daddy, 
Savannah Kalen, and JBaby93. From yesterday's video, let's shout out Fox Boy, Joe Nicasio, Charlie Rubin, Frost Free Running, and Simon. Thanks to all of you and to everyone else, and until next time, 